Hi everyone, welcome to episode 55 of the Access Noise Music Podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm your host, my name is Mark Miller, and in this episode, my guest is Johnny Took from Australian three-piece rock band DMAs. If you missed last week's episode, I was joined by music legend and national treasure, Sean Ryder. Sean talked to me about his new solo album, Visits from Future Technology, Celebrity Gogglebox, Happy Mondays and Black Grape. So check it out, and if you like the podcast, it would be amazing if you can subscribe and share with your friends. If you want up-to-date music news, album reviews and interviews, then check out our main website at accessnoise.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Search for the tag at Access Noise Music. Here's Access Noise writer Daniel Lynch with a taste of what's been on the website this week. In the reviews section, What Then is the second album from Irish troubadour David Keenan. It gets an 8 out of 10 score from us. On What Then, Keenan pushes the boundaries of poetry and folk, cementing his place as one of Ireland's outstanding performers. In our new music section, we're streaming the latest releases from Damon Auburn, Child of the Parish, DMAs, They Might Be Giants and The Wedding Present, who've just announced plans to release 24 songs in 2022. Finally, Dave Hawes releases his new album Blood Harmony on October 22nd. We've been chatting to him about writing the album with his younger brother Tim and recording with some of the biggest names in music, including Bruce Springsteen's bassist Gary Talent. There's an interview with Dave and a review of the album on accessnoise.com. DMAs embark upon the biggest UK tour from an international artist since Covid hit. I caught up with DMA's guitarist Johnny Took to talk about the tour, the band's new EP, his time living in Scotland and much more. So sit back, relax and enjoy the Access Noise Music Podcast with Johnny Took of DMA's. Hi Johnny, welcome to the Access Noise Podcast. Hey, how you doing? It's actually good to get speaking to you. I've interviewed Tommy and Mason before, so it's great to finally chat with you. Yeah, awesome. You're DMA's main songwriter and guitarist. Can you remember when you picked the guitar up for the first time? Yes, I kind of do. It was when my... Um... Well, firstly, I'll say, I, you know, I like to think of us all as the, you know, all three of us as the songwriting. Because none of the songs would be what they are if one of us was missing, you know. So firstly, I think that's really important. But yes, I do remember, and it's my it's my dad. Because my dad was a roadie. He he used to uh, he worked with a lot of bands. He worked with uh, In Excess and Neil Young and Cold Chisel, Tom Waits, and a lot of people. He wasn't the greatest guitarist, but he loved to. He loved music, nevertheless. And so uh, I used to I used to play with him when I was a kid, and I guess that's when I first started. And um, and then I remember when I was in high school, I heard some kid in the playground playing Scar Tissue. And I, um, when I was about 13, I thought that was pretty cool. So I asked him to teach it to me. It's a great song. So did you did you learn that whole song then? Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, I just did a really dodgy version of the intro. Um, <laughs> and and then I um, and then uh, at the, the school I was at, it was compulsory to learn. Um, an instrument in your first year of high school, which was pretty cool. So I was going to pick between uh, the clarinet and the bass guitar. And I picked the bass guitar and then that kind of segued into me um, learning the actual guitar. And yeah, and then getting into, so I listened to a lot of the country music, um, but I wasn't a great singer. Um, so I used to write a lot of poetry. Um, and I guess that's kind of how I started as a songwriter. When you're writing songs with the band, what is the process? Does everything start with the guitar, an acoustic guitar? Initially, it, it did, definitely. But as we've grown older, there there really isn't a process at all. And I think you hear a lot of um, songwriters talking about that these days. And I think it's important to have different process and ha- processes and having and having different ways of being inspired. Even like you know, we've been working on songs for album four now and as I've started moving into 
different levels of production. Um, one thing I'll do now, uh, especially uh, it's this kind of stem down of COVID is I'll write um, an instrumental, sometimes even just an electronic song, you know, with a whole bunch of samples and synths and drum machines. Um, and then I'll send that to Tommy and Mason and then kind of get them to write different melodies on top. Um, so it's almost like uh, you can use the instrumental as a stimulus and they can be inspired by something they didn't even know was coming, which is super cool, keeping everyone on their toes. And um, But then sometimes Mason will bring pretty much a whole song or I'll bring a whole song or Tommy has a bunch of melodies together or we Frankenstein them together and, and join like four different melodies over a 10-year period that they've been written all together. So. Mm-hmm. You know, basically, there's no right or wrong answer, just whatever gets the job done. Because since the band has been together such a long time now, do you think the songwriting is getting easier? I think songwriting, it, in some ways it is. Um, because songwriting, I, is, it's a, I feel like it's a trade. You know, like you, the more you do it, the better, the better you get at it. Like it really is like anything in life, you know. Uh, And you can kind of, and if you stop doing it for a bit, you kind of need to get back into it to get the ball rolling again. But at the same time, there's also a thing that can definitely said for, uh, for you being in your youth and when you're young, you know, and you kind of, I guess you're not thinking about stuff as much. And there's a, uh, there's a real vulnerability to it where, uh, where you can kind of spit out songs pretty damn quickly. And also because everything's new, you know, like when you start getting older, you, you play a chord progression and you're like, well, fuck, I did that, you know, three years ago. And it reminds you of songs you've written before. So, um, you know, you got to find other ways to keep yourself on your toes and getting into production and, and getting into synthesizers and sampling and stuff like that has given me more avenues to be able to write in different genres, not only, but you got to remember that uh, a song can be, a song can be done in heaps of different ways. So, if you write a song like um, like that's a complete instrumental and you then you write a melody to it, not only can you do that melody, you know, that, uh, how do I articulate this? You know, you can have a, um, a, 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 a electronic track that's like basically doesn't even change chord, you know what I mean? It's just an ar- mm-hmm. arp or, or noise that's in key. It's almost atonal. And then you can write melodies to that but this, so when you do the demo, there's no chord changes, but then when you have to work it out to make it into a more of a, so, a traditional song, then you work out chord changes, you know, and then you end up doing chord progressions and melodies that you wouldn't naturally normally go to, which mm-hmm. I think is pretty cool. You, you moved from Sydney to Edinburgh for a year. Um, did, did you find living in Scotland inspiring? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really did. I, for a few reasons. Firstly, um, I really love, I love the UK and I love, I love the architecture. I love the people and I like the cold, you know, I think there's, there's something that's quite inspiring about it. It's something that's like fresh and, and kind of real about it. You know, sometimes you don't really feel like writing a song when you're just sitting on the beach, you know, something like that, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're in a house and you I don't know, there's not really much else to do. You're not going to go for a walk in the park. You're, you're going to sit at home and write music and, so to be honest, I wrote, I walked a lot around Edinburgh. I put my headphones in um, and I'd listen to a lot of electronic music because I was kind of almost study studying it a bit and like and I would and I'd listen to new music and just walk and walk and walk around the city, and um, and I guess that's where uh, you know a lot of life is a game of changing, um, um, parts of Hello Girlfriend, like the chorus story for Hello Girlfriend and. Just so basically a lot of songs that were on the glow were kind of written um, in that era. But also um, not just Edinburgh, but I think it's also quite, obviously there's no rules when it comes to songwriting, but I find moving cities 